Hola, welcome to the Crafty Kylock. Today we're going to be making Irish soda bread. Um, this is one of my favorite breads to make. It's one of the only breads I know how to make. It's also the easiest bread I know how to make. It's super tasty and it's going to be a nice quick video today. So first I'm going to go through the ingredients. Now the ingredients for every soda bread recipe are going to be different. This is just my recipe. It's the one that I have taken from a couple of different recipes I found online, uh, mash them together, put my own spin on it, and yeah, so hopefully you like it if you make it. Um, if you have any tips, any differences on what you put in your soda bread, do put it in the comments because I like tweaking things and seeing what can make a recipe a bit better as well. First of all, I have some Odlum's coarse wholemeal flour. So we have 250 grams of wholemeal flour. Then I put in 150 grams of plain white flour. This is just plain white. I think I got this in Aldi flour. Um, we have one teaspoon of bread soda. One teaspoon of salt. I have pink Himalayan salt here. It's just what we use in the house. If you have table salt, fine table salt, that's absolutely fine too. Uh, we also, so the recipe that I use calls for buttermilk, but I have never used buttermilk in it. And that's because I'm very forgetful and I keep forgetting to buy buttermilk. So what I do is I take 300, just under 300 gram or 300 milliliters of milk. And we use low fat milk in this house. So low fat milk. And then I put a dash, quite a good dash of lemon juice into it and that basically is a good replacement for buttermilk it kind of curdles the milk a little bit makes it thicker and that works um, I also use one egg something that I haven't found in any other recipe and maybe it's because buttermilk is used butter is typically not used but I do about 50 to 75 grams of butter I cube it up and put it in the method. I just find that that gives it a really nice taste and I use salted butter. And then I use 50 grams of porridge oats. Sometimes if I don't have porridge oats, I'll use the fine like um, oatmeal, kids, ready break type hot oat cereal, uh, which is just basically finely ground oat flour and some oats all mixed in together. Is there anything I didn't say there? Oh yes, and just a spoonful of honey, just to kind of give it a bit of a sweet flavor. So those are the ingredients. I'm gonna weigh them out now. I'm gonna have some tea. So, so I really like this bread because basically you can kind of eat it with anything. You can have it with some stew to mop up the stew soup. You can have it with soup. You can have it just with plain butter, it's still delicious. You can also put like jam on it, you can put chocolate spread on it. It's really versatile, or even just butter and honey is really nice on it as well. It's something like I've grown up watching my granny make brown bread. Um, when I was younger, like every, nearly every week she'd make brown bread. And it's just so delicious. 250 grams of coarse wholemeal flour. And now we're going in with 150 of plain white flour. Uh, what I like about it as well is it doesn't really create a lot of washing up. It's not a lot of mess with it. There's no proving. Uh, I recently learned how to use yeast and actually make uh, make white bread. And yeast is terrifying. Uh, somebody who never really used yeast ever in baking, yeast is absolutely terrifying. Uh, kind of unpredictable. And yeah. <laughs> so, 50 grams of oats. Bless you. So that's the dry ingredients. I add the bread soda afterwards um, because just because I'm gonna just chop up the butter as well because I'm using butter in this and I'm not using buttermilk I kind of approach it in the way I learned how to make scones 
which was to rub or which is to rub the butter into the dry ingredients and kind of make breadcrumbs essentially and I just find that that works the butter into the bread really nicely and then you get this really nice texture and flavor throughout the entire the entire um, bread the entire loaf um, what you're also going to want to do is sometimes I use a loaf pan today I'm not I'm just going to shape it with my hands and kind of hold it like that so that's the butter all cubed um, next then I'm going to add the lemon juice to the milk. Now this can be a little bit, I don't the first time I did this, it's a little bit nerve wracking. So I just, I kind of just go by eye and I just put a good, I don't put a good squeeze of lemon juice into it. Um, when I don't use the lemon juice in the bottle and I use an actual lemon, I usually put one whole lemon worth of juice into it and then just stir it around and just leave it sit there while you're doing the rest of everything and then the last thing I'm going to do before I get my hands dirty is just mix the egg so I get the egg ready to put into the buttermilk that I've just made so I just crack the egg I usually put it into either a small bowl or a small bowl or a cup like I'm doing now Gonna just mix that until it's one consistency. I'll set that aside, I'll add it to the milk just before I add the milk to the dry mixture. And now it's time to start this. So I have my bowl of dry ingredients. I am going to get a wooden spoon, which you should have in your kitchen. Everyone should have a wooden spoon. If not to bake with, then to put the fear of God of children into it. I'm joking. Um, that's a bit of Irish humour. Every granny and every Irish mammy has a wooden spoon that they will tr threaten children with. Right, so I'm going to dump the butter in and obviously with clean hands, I have cleaned my hands before I started this process. So clean hands, no rings either and you don't need to, you can use your entire hand but it's just as easy to just use the tips of your fingers and you just get right into it there. So rubbing butter into the mix also helps with putting air into, into the mixture, into the flour. I am um, probably gonna I'm probably gonna get added in the comments. I don't use a sieve at all in my baking. I like at all. Uh, unless I really, really need to. Uh, I actually, since we moved last year, I actually don't own a sieve. Uh, my baking always turns out fine. I just make sure to mix it well. And this is what the rubbing in the, in my particular method that I use here does as well. I just make sure that the mixture is nice and even before the wet mixture goes into it of the milk and the egg. And this takes a while. Um, and I feel like I should have used a bigger bowl, but this bowl is the perfect size. It's like a medium glass bowl. I find this process is kind of meditative as well. Because um, it's repetitive and you just kind of zone out and your mind wanders and it's really nice. Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that now. It's kind of bread crummy. The butter is nicely meshed into it and it's time to add the wet ingredients. Okay, so now what you want to do is get your jug of slightly curdled, slightly lumpy milk and lemon juice. So you're gonna take this, you're gonna move your wet ingredients over to the side for a sec. And this 
is actually a new jar of honey. We're gonna grab a teaspoon of honey. A nice generous teaspoon of honey. And you mix that in. Then you get your egg that you've already beaten. And you throw that in as well. And you give that a nice mix around. And then what you're going to do before you add the wet to the dry, first I'm going to drink some tea. I'm going to get another teaspoon. I'm going to get one teaspoon of the bread soda. That's a nice generous teaspoon of the bread soda and throw that in. Gonna get your wooden spoon, get your salt, throw in your salt, give that a mix around, give it a good mix around so you're not getting lumps of salt and lumps of bread soda. Um, so that's nicely mixed in there. So what I do then is I get my butter knife that I was using earlier and I actually mix it in with butter knife. You can use, um, like you can use your wooden spoon if you want, but I use a butter knife because I just find that when it gets down to the last bit, it's easier to use a butter knife to do it. So I'm just going to add this a little bit at a time. So I put about a third in first and then just mix it around in the well in the center. And it'll just slowly start coming together. And then when it starts getting a bit dry and a bit stiff, just add another bit. So I add about another third and I keep the last third then. So you don't want it too wet, but you also don't want it too dry. So. And I kind of just fold it around like that. Fold it in itself and then kind of cut it in with the butter knife then. Like so. Sometimes I just have to take it up and go like this. And when it's mostly incorporated, and I actually don't even need that final third there. Yeah, it's wet enough. So when it's still kind of sticky wet and you still have a little bit of, a little bit of the dry mixture kind of down the bottom, what you want to do is just grab a bit of flour. It doesn't matter if it's the white flour or the coarse flour, but I throw it down on the counter and obviously a clean counter. This is where you get your hands dirty. So take it out of the bowl and I just kind of shape it like so. And you don't need to knead it. This is the really good thing about this bread. It doesn't need to be kneaded. You just pile it, you just shape it and make sure that it's not sticky on the outside into a thing, so thing, into like a round mound. And that's it. So I'm gonna get my tin ready. I'm gonna wash my hands. 
So I'm going to use one of these tins, it's just a regular flat tin. And what I'm going to do is just throw a little bit of flour on the bottom, just so it doesn't stick. But if I was using a loaf tin, I would basically put butter along the sides, grease it, and then put some flour in it, shake the, sh the flour around the side of the, the bottom and the sides of the pan or the tin. And that way the loaf comes out really easily, then it doesn't stick to it. So we have our, oops, we have our flour tin. We're gonna take our loaf, pop it in the center, and before it goes in the oven, the all important scoring happens. Now, what I really like about the scoring element of the Irish soda bread is that obviously you score it so that the rise happens evenly in the bread and it doesn't kind of go weird. But there's a folklore reason for scoring the bread as well. And the folklore reason is to leave the fairies out of the bread because if you don't score it, the bread gets all messed up because fairies because Ireland. So we're gonna score the bread. So you score it generally in four, so one day, like 12 to six, and then three to, or nine to three. That's how I usually do it. And then it's ready to bake. So we're gonna bake this for 45 to 50 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. And then we're gonna take it out and test it. So while we're waiting for that to cook, I'm gonna drink my tea and then I'm gonna tidy up this mess and then it should be ready. So it's been about 50 minutes and this looks pretty much done. So how you can tell it's done is, well, first of all, pick it up you get that kind of sound and the second way you can tell if it's done is get a skewer pop it in and it comes out clean and there you have it it's the bread done uh, so now we're gonna let it cool because you don't want to cut it when it's super fresh and it's still really hot it will just break apart so we're gonna leave it cool i'm gonna take it off the hot tray and put it on a wire rack so it's been a few hours the bread has completely cooled still getting that sound that solid sound and then we're gonna cut it and there we go irish soda bread healthy amount of butter. Mm. It's still just a little bit warm. <coughs> but it's very tasty. That's it for Irish soda bread. Let me know if there's another Irish recipe that you'd like me to do, that you'd like me to try. As I said, I really like Irish stew, so I could absolutely happily do an Irish stew recipe. Let me know in the comments. If you try this recipe, let me know how you get on as well. And until next time, slán